Jenny, there's my old jet, the T-38. Let's go check it out. Now, these folks that are, um, the Air Force personnel that are with the aircraft today, they got to go through the PA or public affairs before they can really get on camera and talk a whole lot. So yours truly will just do all the yammering. Right, Pete? Check it out. Let's go find the T-38. We're here at the black T-38 on display here at the Steel National Championship Air Races. Pete, where's this uh, T-38 from? That's our hometown right there, Grass Valley. Ropers fly over all the time. Check it out. We'll show you around a little bit. Now, if I remember correctly, a pair of J-85 engines producing uh, just under 30,000 pounds of thrust. The T-38, of course, is a supersonic trainer, and so the shape of this fuselage is part of its su supersonic capability because of the area rule of supersonic flow you want to minimize the area of the fuselage here in the wing where the wings are to minimize the effect of the shock wave as it flows over the aircraft from nose to tail so try to reduce the area at the fuselage where the wings are located now look at these real thin wings on the t-38 that's all you get. <laughs> and you don't get any leading edge uh, slats or droop at all on the uh, original T-38. On an F-5 you do, which improves your turning performance. So your landing speed on this and your, your wing area is very small and your landing speeds are very high. Now you got flaps on the T-38, which you normally land with but you also practice no flap landings in the T-38 and those landing speeds can be upwards of 170 knots and then as you have uh, a more than a thousand pounds of fuel for each hundred pounds you add another knot of airspeed if I remember my numbers correctly uh, onto that no flap speed so heavyweight no flap landings are extremely fast and difficult to do in the T-38 there's some speed brakes there to help you slow down. Of course, retractable landing gear, small thin little tires, uh, formation flying lights for night formation, which is always a real pain. Another part of, of supersonic flight, in order to maintain control of the aircraft as you punch through the sound barriers, you want to have a full flying stabilator. Look at how thin this is. We learned this very early on. Uh, Chuck Yeager figured all this out in the X1 that you couldn't have a conventional stabilizer elevator system in a supersonic aircraft it just became too hard to control in supersonic flight again with the disruption of airflow of the sonic wave over those two surfaces so instead you just run a full flying stabilator to maintain pitch control of the aircraft as you proceed through the speed of sound the T-38 has afterburners, and that's how you get her into to-go supersonic. Oh, you can still smell it in there. <laughs> the smell of the unburnt jet fuel. So in order to get a T-38 to-go supersonic, you got to go up to altitude, up near 40,000 feet or so, pitch the nose down about 10 degrees, light the burners. You can really feel a kick in the pants from the acceleration of the afterburners and then it'll it'll uh, hop right up through Mach 1 and go up to Mach 1.1 or so but you got to keep coming downhill <laughs> it'll barely do it I don't think it'll even do it in straight and level flight as I recall and so the trick is look at those lenticular clouds today the trick is keeping it supersonic on that one I believe when we went through the syllabus, it was only one supersonic flight. Once you get it supersonic, you want to stay supersonic. And the instructor, you're usually with an instructor when you do this. You better be. <laughs> you're not supposed to be popping the sound barrier uh, <laughs> just on your own. Um, but you want to maintain super. He has you maneuver, and you're going to discover that the controls feel a little differently in supersonic flight. As I remember, they were a little less responsive in supersonic flight, as again, that shock wave is disrupting the airflow slightly. But if you start pulling any G's, as I recall, it'll quickly, quickly decelerate and go subsonic on you. All of a sudden, the flight controls become very effective, and then you got to be careful. It's very easy to over G 
the aircraft, especially rolling G's. The T-38 does not tolerate a lot of rolling G's. There's a rolling G limit and it's just a positive and negative G limit as well. But when we're out there beating up these jets over the years, we could get these thin little wings to really bend hard as you're out there doing your aerobatics. If, if I remember correctly, when we did our loops in the T-38, it would take about 10,000 feet of altitude to get this thing to come up and over on its back. So <laughs> straight up for 10,000 feet and then finally would hop over and then straight down for another 10,000 feet and that altimeter just wind up and down the whole time. But just a sweet, sweet jet to fly and to learn to land on. Now let's go check out the uh, latest in avionics on the steam powered a model t38 here check this out we're going to check out the latest of your avionics uh, up here and this is what i love about the beale t38 so we go wide angle on there they still got the steam gauges from the old days and this was exactly the way we trained back in the um, 80s and 90s in the t38 up here is one of the most important gauges this was added soon after the t-38 came online an angle of attack indicator and uh, is it still a, a green donut and an up arrow and a down arrow it is. all right of course your artificial horizon i had pete in here doing the doing his blind cockpit re review uh, hsi airspeed indicator with mock right there wind it all the way up to mock 1.4 but about mock 1.1 is about 1.3s are overspeed but 1.3 is red red line yeah. all right uh, yeah, I could barely get it up to 1.2, I think. Maybe 1.1. Anyways, altimeter, rate of climb. Two very well laid out set of engine gauges. Watching those very closely. G meter, very critical. Positive, and we talked about positive G limit. Looks like about six. Negative G limit of about two and a half. But what about the rolling G limit? Or is that what I'm looking at here? Um, we... You still got you still got to you got to watch your rolling G's on these things because it's going to be a, a, a smaller number than the than the positive G number if I recall correctly. One's symmetric and one's asymmetric that you're looking at. There. Okay. And then so a symmetric G limit of seven and a half, asymmetric or rolling G limit of about six G's, I think. Uh, and then back here are your throttles uh, and your flaps. Now, to get her into afterburner, uh, was it just a matter of getting it over the gate? Yes, there's a gate that's right in here. Yeah, right there. It gets it into burner. And if you rip them all the way back, you can go past idle over a gate into off. So don't panic on the overshoot and rip these things back to off and shut down both engines. Because <laughs> the relight is... It wasn't a relight. You punch the uh, throttles all the way forward and, and the damn things will relight. And uh, then if you panic and hit these <laughs> and eject yourself out of the aircraft, you've got the thing in relight, the jet will eventually relight, and then it'll launch itself right into the terra firma without you if you do that unfortunate sequence of events. Anyways, full ejection seat. The canopy is supposed to fire off by itself, but um, this will help bust the canopy if in the event the canopy does not open. And it, as an instructor, this jet's a real challenge because the instructor's in the back seat, student in the front, and it's hard to yes. it's hard to instruct from, and it's and you're moving very very fast, and so it washes out a lot of students, yeah, and it's a challenging jet to uh, be a first assignment instructor in. So you definitely got to be fighter qualified to instruct in your first assignment in one of these jets. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. We got another Blanco Lirio fan that was just listening in on the live broadcast of that. We'll get this up here shortly. That's Captain Trisha up there. You're just getting checked out in the in the whole program now. 3810 U2s. Congratulations for getting into the U2 program. And you came through which aircraft? You're a T-1 Faith, first assignment instructor pilot in the T-1 aircraft. That's the little beach jet trainer. Outstanding. Glad to see you here. Welcome to Beale. <laughs> 